Welcome back to the Lighten Up Podcast, where we give you tips, tricks, and scenarios that can help you in your lighting business. I'm Dave Kimura. I'm Mike Marlow. And today's topic, we're going to talk about the rental business. I know that as you talk through, sometimes people want to turn over inventory, they want to sell inventory. So we're going to talk to Mike a little bit and give a couple scenarios on why the rental business is beneficial and why it might work for your business. So again, Mike, welcome. Hey, buddy. Um, so as we talk through the rent, the business of Christmas lights, obviously there are a ton of people that are, I buy the lights, I put them up, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, there's also some businesses that uh, maybe they're a landscape business and they're just an installer. What I mean by that is they don't own the biz, they don't own the light product, but they, you know, this homeowner would like someone to put their lights right. up for them. Mm -hmm. So I know there's that. And then there is the full rental business, which you've been a part of um, that I've dabbled in a little bit now. Um, so let's talk about that. So as an owner, um, as a business owner, as a right? business yeah. owner, yeah. why why the rental business? Um, you know, the, this goes way back when you know. I think it all started back in like mid 2005 to 2010, right? When everybody started doing this leasing program. And this is because back then it was right before LED came out in the market. So, and this is just my opinion on it, but when LED came on the market, obviously everything before that was all incandescent. So about every, when you deal with incandescent light sets, you had a, a shorter lifespan of that product. So every third or fourth year, maybe fifth year, you had to go back to your existing clients going, hey, you gotta buy more product now. And, and or hey, this is out, but it's out of warranty. Uh, you're gonna have to re replace it, here's an extra cost. And for me, as a business owner, I'm not really one that likes to nickel and dime my clients. I'd rather just get a flat fee, and if it's something that we're doing wrong, then it's on us. Um, that's kind of why, why I say the why is it, because what it does is it takes away some of that friction of client and business relationships, mm -hmm. and then tries it. You're, what you're doing is you're still, you wanna be a rock star every time. You want anybody that talks about your company, like all oh, these guys are great, they handle me, they do this, they do this, and they, they got the whole system set. You don't want somebody to come back and go, hey, uh, yeah, every time I look around, they're giving me another bill for something, you know, because this product's out, that product's out. I don't even know why I'm even putting lights on the house. Right. So that's the reason why sometimes that's, a, that's, a, that's I would say, a benefit to the business owner. Then you, as well as the next thing I would say is you're controlling your inventory and your business better. And the way I break that down is that anytime you have a client and cl multiple clients, let's call it that, and you don't have to go back to them for anything other than send them up, you know, changing lights or not changing lights and then renew them, you, it gets a little bit more easier to, to scale your business quicker. But then as well as you think about that, all your product is is yours. Right. So if somebody drops, you can go resell that. You know, if if, if you need to add more things into it, you can. So those are just some of my, my thoughts on it. I don't know if that really answers everything no, it does. properly because- well, I know we'll get a little bit later in terms of the, like, yeah. the price savings and structure and mm -hmm. that type of stuff. So yeah. I just kind of wanted to talk from a high level on, on you know, why in your in your scenario of being in the Christmas lighting business for as long as you have, why you felt like that was the best method for you. Yeah, because in the beginning, I, all I did was I sold the product and then I would do, I always kind of call it the IRS. I'd charge a client install, removal, and storage, right? Because I was always storing. IRS. Like yeah, that. you like that? Yeah. <laughs> tax man gets your money, we're getting our money. But um, so when you look at that, what, what I failed in the beginning was really recognizing what it costs to scale the business better on that second year, third year. If you don't put that into those kind of scenarios, you could be doing the same work, but lesser money, you know, because of gas prices, everything kind of scales up. Or maybe it's a tree grew and client is expecting you to put lights out. Well, you've got to communicate, like you got to buy more lights. Um, and then sometimes when you, I've seen it happen before, is that when someone sells you, they sell lights, they forget to add it onto the client's bill, and you already did all the work, and never gets documented, and all of a sudden those lights are in that client's project. Next crew comes around, they don't know any different, they think all the lights are for that tree. So there's a lot of different details on and the, the cost of goods. And the yeah. cost of goods, cost of goods go up year. too, yeah. yeah. They yeah. go up, because you always, you always gotta sometimes replace it. So with, with the leasing, I just think that you know, you're controlling your inventory and, and as well as then you, you can actually control better margin, not margin, but better pricing to that too, to, to reflect that. Awesome. Well, I know, I know from, from my standpoint, um, 
when just talking in circles of people, right? Mm-hmm. When when you hear that the the average ticket is anywhere from 800 to 1200 or 900 to 1500, whatever it might be, depending on your area, there's always that three people of the group of five or whatever that, oh my gosh, they're, you know, they look like I would never. Yeah. And so then what's yeah. interesting is when, you, when you're not in the business, you can completely see it from that perspective. Mm-hmm. The, I would never, I would never pay a thousand dollars for someone to put my Christmas lights right. up. But then, you know, what I want to touch on that I that I've have you ever have you ever ever paid somebody to detail your car? Um, yes, my okay. wife's car, not mine. But but I mean, so that's a that's a that's a premium service. Not a lot of people can afford it. It's well, the same thing for I lighting. I think it's the same thing, right? Like, yeah. there there are tons of people paying for landscaping. Well, yeah, there's tons of people yeah. paying for well, snow removal. Look at look at the fertilization or just some other services that maybe because everybody gets busy. You know? I think what it comes down to, honestly, and I know it's the holidays, and, and, and don't get me wrong, if you are a Christmas enthusiast and that is what you love to do, by all means, continue to do it. It's right, great. Right. But what we're getting into with COVID and all that kind of stuff is what we're paying for is convenience. Yes. We're paying for the convenience, right? Um, you know, some some people need to pay uh, the holiday lighting guy to come do their holiday lights when their when their family's gone and then when they get home be sitting it, on the couch with your arm in a sling yeah. and make everybody feel bad for you but yeah. i think <laughs> you know i think the value to the rental business from a client perspective or from a from a homeowner perspective is the same thing right you can be you can let your imagination or your kids or wife's imagination roam a little bit and say you know we'd like to do this mm-hmm. And is it possible, right? Where if you knew, just like we all do, right? When my wife comes to me and says, I'd like to do this. If you've ever tiled a shower before, you know that the no, scenario- I would hire somebody to do it because I don't yeah, have the skill set. I've done that. And <laughs> when I, you can get a uh, uh, 12 by 12 tile and it would be really fast, but my wife wants the, the subway the, tiles that are about yay small big. small little squares. You yeah. go in there and uh, they, come in, they come by and they just say, how's it going, right? <laughs> Same thing with Christmas lights. So How's it Christmas, going in there? Yeah, the Christmas light scenario, I think you you can let your imagination go a little bit. You are you're giving it to the professionals. You're right. saying, hey, this is what I'd like to do at my home. Is it possible? Can they make it happen? Yes. But then there's the, I don't have to put it up. I don't have to maintain yes. it. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes down, I don't have to make room you for even, this just, winter wonderland in my garage. Exactly, and it's and that's where the industry is just blown up. I right. mean, there's so many companies getting into this industry, a because it's an easy industry to get into and it's low overhead, but they their demand is so high. How many right. multiple companies have have 50, 100, 200 leads just not being able to be touched because their schedule is already full. Almost everyone that I talk to. Everyone, yeah, exactly. So, so that means that there's a more, you know, and there's going to be some companies that scale right to a million bucks or more. Right. There's going to be some that are going to struggle and, and still be in that couple hundred thousand, uh, which is okay because if you can get to a certain level and make sure your numbers are right, you're gonna you're gonna you'll net out really well. Here's a here's a here's a side question that I think you can you can go into a little bit. So, I'm you know Johnny Landscaper. Right, I own a, I own a landscape business. Hi, Johnny. And and I personally am the owner of the business, but I still feel as if I would never pay right a thousand dollars to have someone put holiday lights up. Mm-hmm. Right, but I'm gonna get into the holiday lighting business. Right. Yeah, because you might have clients have been asking you for years to get Correct. into or do something. So, what do you say to those guys that are getting into the business that are only charging? X amount of dollars for the job just because their mental block is I would never, you know. I know that's it's probably hurting the industry, it, it, and it's yeah. also probably hurting their growth. So can you talk about that? Well, a there's bit? probably two two ways to look at that. A were they properly trained? Okay. You know, did they probably really understand what the cost of the goods are and how you do a proper markup and how you properly look at labor from install and take down as well as what storage facility they're gonna be putting that client's product in or even their own product. So those are that's a whole equation that that takes time to, to kind of put together, but then you can kind of come up with your numbers by each category. But as you start thinking about like these, what I've come across by doing all these trainings in the past is that if, let's say you're a mower, mowing company, right? 
and you're charging 35 bucks, 40 bucks a mo. In your mind, that's 45 bucks. You're not taking that 45 and times it by 30 on the on the weeks you're going to be there. You're just looking at $40, $45, whatever it might be. Now, when you start jumping that into Christmas lighting, now you're thinking, oh, 1200 2000 5000 dollar project. You're like, holy cow. But it, it, the mindset's a little different when you're not looking at individually, you know? Um, like if you're a landscaper, you already chart, you want those five, ten thousand, twenty thousand, a hundred thousand dollar projects anyway. There's no different in the Christmas world because those projects are out there. I mean, just helped an individual the other day. His first job that he sold was twenty seven hundred dollars. Think about that. Right. His first job. Never did holiday lighting before, and he wouldn't closed a twenty seven hundred dollar project. Kudos to him. Right. You know, I helped him along the way on some of that stuff, but he still had to go and execute it and right. communicate with the client. And I think too, when I when I think about it, um, even and that, even and that my, was a lease. That was on a lease project. Too. And even myself, like I, I've thought that same thing when I first got into the business about the about the the price and that type of stuff. But if you think about it in in a different regard, right? If if I decided to go get my house painted yeah, and it was gonna cost $2,700 or $3,000 mm-hmm. to paint my house. I would be frustrated by it, but I would pay it, right. right? And then the next year, if I wanted to paint my house again, which I wouldn't, but you know what I'm saying, in terms of those things that we want to, for example, landscape lighting, right? Mm-hmm. We pay a, you know $10,000 for a landscape job, they come, they put the lights up, it's fantastic. And I paid the money and I got what I wanted. But what you're doing in the holiday business is each year you're providing that service. Yes. You're putting that, you're, you're creating that atmosphere, that scenario, whatever that might be for the client. They've paid X amount of dollars for it and then it goes yeah, away. And I and still think it's a lot of this, the social society that we're in now. And I think that's where your social media has helped our business a lot too, because more people are taking pictures of their own homes and showing what gets done. And then their neighbor's like, who'd you hire type thing? Or, or did you that yourself? No, I hired such and such. I think that's the social media side of this really helped our home services business and industry, but even more so in holiday lighting because we are such a visual kind of industry. Because you can't you can't say here's a C9 bulb and most consumers are like, oh, I get that. No, they're they're gonna want to see it somehow lit up on a roof line. And I know there's a huge difference, and this is probably the number one thing that clients don't understand at times, is there is a massive difference between commercial grade Christmas lights and oh, yes. the, the standard retail Christmas lights. Even just, and I think just the lumens, just the, the durability is just those are the first two things around right top. Yeah, of my when head. you're when you're on a street that has um, there's a lot of homes that are being decorated and yours we, is the we'll, only we'll, one. We'll call it the Costco or uh, Sam's Club. Yeah, light the, sets. the Sam's Club <laughs> effect. So when you're on a street that has um, a, a professionally decorated house in terms of uh, the the product right. versus the Costco and the Sam's Club and whatever other Christmas light More, section. Yeah, Andy. It's a huge difference. I mean, it's it's substantial. Yeah. You can definitely tell um, from from a lot of angles. Perfect. So, going back from a, from a business owner right. perspective, can you talk about a little bit the rent, the benefits of the rental business as far as the pricing structure and some percentages and that type of stuff for the audience? Well, so. There's two things to look at it. So you think about this in any business, you want to control the narrative as much as possible, right? So if you can control your inventory, understand your inventory, and you, you're you obviously putting a good price, markup price to it, you know, let's say, just a prime example, a light set, mini light set that goes on trees and shrubs, 26 foot strand, which is uh, 50 count, six inch spacing. You're, you're usually buying that from a wholesaler, we'll just call it an average $10, right? It could be nine, could be 11, depends on how you're buying it. Um, you would actually then go out and lease that to a client for 28 to $32. Because as you know, you might not know, but like if you take a one light set, it, if you already have it ready to go and you're starting to go around a tree, you're only there maybe five minutes with one each strand at most. And then you just go to grab another strand, you keep on rolling. Um, but if you think about leasing it for 30 bucks, 32, you're you're gonna be in the right profit percentage where you should be in that 40% mark that first year. And then on the second year, I mean, I, there's, I don't have all the calculators in front of us, but second year, because the cost of goods is gone on that tree, and that light set's still gonna be good to work with. Right then your cost of goods, you're taking that $10 and you just made more profit. Right. 
And so like- From when, year one to year three. Yeah, so yeah. just imagine that compounded over 100 projects, okay? Now, if you go year one, 100 projects, and then year two, you have those same 100 projects there, how much more percentage of cost of goods that you're bringing into your company as a profit net? Right. And the biggest thing is understanding your balance sheet to make sure the profit net's there. Yeah, you got some overhead and you got some, but a lot of that's built in on the labor side and built in on the market markup side. So there's a lot more money to be made every, the second year, third year after you knit that initial sale. Because, you know, the clients, you, like, you know, you'll still see that 90% retention. So you, all you gotta do is just keep on filling up that tank of how many, how many, how many projects your team can do. And that's good from a from a business scenario too, because in year two, without any sort of um, add on, mm -hmm. you're making more money on a job. Yes, you're making more money. And let's say somebody drops out. Well, that those bulbs and light sets can be used to a different project. Right. So you're not. So then it's almost like how they look at it from a. Uh, grocery store or anybody that puts uh, stuff on a shelf they're looking at inventory and like how many turns shelf can life, we right. yeah, yeah how many turns can we get off that off the shelf in that space because retailers always look at like the retail value space of how they look at stuff and i think that's the same way we should look at as decorators like how many turns can i get out of a bulb how many turns can i get out of a light set garland reese whatever it might be and if you can say i want five turns out of that you bought the product the first year but now you have four more turns that you're making a profit on, on that same cost of goods. Yeah. So if you can get five turns on everything, that you're winning. If you if you you start now and you look five years down the road, you'll have a lot more inventory, and then you can don't even get me into like how you can you start taxing that and using that asset. Let's say anybody gets in business, and this is you know what's your exit strategy. Right. So if you have a bunch of inventory and you have clients that they have to use that inventory to get that, don't you think your vet, your business can be more valuable? Correct. So then that gives you that gives you more leverage to make more money at the end. Right. So let me ask you a quick question from a from again from a from a client um, scenario. Is there anything, or is this just part of like you're talking about adding the putting the prices in there? When you are in this lease model, mm -hmm. and you come to my house and um, I spend twelve hundred dollars on my lights. Do I? If, if something happens, if the bulb goes out, if that kind of stuff, is it built in that your guys are just going to come and fix that, or how does that work? Yeah, no, it's built in. So yeah, because there shouldn't be any. If you put on a, a residential project, yeah, on a, yeah. If there's when you put a project pricing together, that's built in. You know, because a lot of times, if if you let's say you have fifty projects, and you put an extra hour man hour into every project, so now you have fifty hours extra to deal with any service calls. A lot of people don't do that sometimes. They don't put that extra labor in every bid. Right. To, Cause not some bit, some houses you're never gonna go back to. Right. Some you might go back. Sometimes cut, the timer yeah. is just, I mean, And, and it, it could be just, it depends on the crew. I mean, was that crew properly chain, trained? Are there checklists on leaving that project to make sure that that's all taken care of? Or you just might have a bad timer or a bad GFCI that needs to be replaced. One of those things. But yeah, I would always look at it that you cover yourself with those, you know, we call it service car or service calls, you know, they, yeah. it's, it's the, it's kind of the, the one part of the business that not, that doesn't really get talked about. Um, but it's still part of the business. If you know what I'm getting at. No, I because, do. Cause I do. it's, it's, it's not, it's like a negative, you know, sometimes in this industry, because God, you just spend all this time putting the project up and then all of a sudden three weeks later or four weeks later or sometime, you got like, oh, I gotta go back and fix this one power, this one tree keeps on, then you find squirrels ate it. Yeah, ate but the no cord. different, so no different than anything, right? It's it's your it's your calling card, right? It's, yeah. your, it's your business and, and again, I hate to say it this way, but you know, a lot of times in, I'm sure in the service, service based, the home service business, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's those scenarios that pop up where something is unexpected and your business goes back out and fixes it, that is why people stay with your company. Yeah. Right. Well, and, in any, in any and, and, and how can smooth can that process be? Because right. you look at how many other service industries that you might have to call somebody to come back. And then you look at like how fast did it happen? 
what was communication, you know, and, you know, I understand as being a business owner, you're trying to get to the next thing and you feel like you're going backwards a little bit when you have to fix stuff, but it, it is necessary for client relationships to be stronger. Well, there's not, there's not, I've never met one person that is appreciative when they call and ask and they say, we'll be there between nine and four. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Everybody. As soon as you hear that, that sounds that, like the cable insulation yeah, guys. A, You're like I'll, I'll be there. And, as soon as you get that, it's like, oh my gosh. It's like that, that movie uh, Jim Carrey, the cable guy. Yeah. That's crazy. So yeah. again, again, I think while well, while you said sometimes it feels as if it's a negative, it really is a chance for your business to, to shine stand out. Yeah, to, stand to shine. Out. No Absolutely. doubt about it. And and that's the one thing I feel like. And there's a whole different subject of like, are you really running a, a good operational business? Because if you don't have somebody there to answer the phones, if it's just you, then what you need to do is start scaling your business so then you can put somebody in that seat. Right. And it takes time. It's not overnight, especially it depends on where you're at with your business. Awesome. Well, again, uh, thank yeah. you guys for joining the Lighten Up podcast. Today we talked about the rental business. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's a ton more topics we could talk about with the rental business, but understanding from a business owner's perspective that you are the owner of your own destiny. You can you own every part of it. You can touch every part of it and understand that. Um, from a client perspective, it's convenience. You're paying for convenience. Um, and as far as the scenarios, it gives you the chance to let your business shine, right? At the end of the day, you want to make sure that your business outshines everybody in this in the same space. So if there's anything that we can do to help you with that scenario, that's why we're here. We appreciate you guys reaching out to us. Yep. Have a good day.